Hello Brain Shakers, welcome to the Brain Shakers Academy, your host here Brave Alistairs. In today's session we are looking at the third stage of the process of labor. We have already done a number of sessions and if you have missed any of those episodes, head on to my YouTube channel which is the Brain Shakers Academy and watch those videos. Then come and appreciate as well the third stage of labor. Now let's quickly see what the third stage of labor is all about by understanding the physiology behind it. So within the third stage of labor, we did define the third stage of labor as a period from the delivery of the baby or the complete expulsion of that fetus now you have a baby to a time when the placenta and its membranes are delivered so that is the third stage of labor now when we are talking about the third stage of labor what in particular are we looking at so we're going to be looking at number one we'll be looking at separation Number two, we're going to be talking about descent. Number three, we're going to be looking at the expulsion. Okay, so as we discuss the third stage of labor, we may look at the fourth stage of labor as well in a combination to the third stage of labor because we did make mention that the fourth stage of labor is oftentimes combined to the third stage and that's why we say we have only three stages of labor. Now let's quickly look at the separation process. Now with separation, what is going to happen is that there are a number of ways in which the separation is going to come uh, in and We'll be looking at those two important methods of separation but with the baby now having been delivered what is going to continuously happen is that the uterus will then still continue to contract and the contraction effect of the uterus is contracting the myometrium which is elastic then you have a placenta here which is inelastic and it is incompressible so what is going to then happen is that there'll be a reduction in the placental site okay so that reduction in the placental site is going to force the placenta to then detach. In a normal sense, the placenta would oftentimes detach from the center here. So if it does detach from the center, what is then going to follow is that the bleeding that is coming from the lack of maternal blood supply there is going to facilitate the accumulation of blood here and this blood is going to clot and it will continue increasing in amount, continue increasing in amount forcing the placenta to further detach going towards the margin. So the separation will be towards the margins like that. And this is what we call a retro placental clot. So the retro placental clot also facilitates the separation process when the placenta has started separating from the central aspect. And this means that as it continues to increase in size, it will then force its way and then push the placenta down so that then blood can further uh, find its way out in those ends and then you have the placenta now delivering and as you see the placenta separating from the central aspect it will then come out and emerge from the vagina having the fetal surface as the leading part with its membranes then following and having or housing within it so you will find that the placenta will then fold like that and then you will find the retro placenta is uh, with it inside there and so what is going to present at the vulva here is uh, the fetal surface which is the shiny part of the uh, placenta and the membranes will rub backwards like that and this is a method that we call the shoes method so that is delivery of the placenta by the shoes method. Now, there are also times when the placenta is going to start to separate from the ages, meaning that there is not going to be any retroplacental clot this time. There is just going to be separation of that placenta uh, from the uh, sides. 
So, meaning that the separation will happen from the margins. It may happen starting from this aspect here, meaning that the placenta will keep on separating in that direction. And this will take a little bit longer for the placenta to then completely separate. And the chances of it then continuously bleeding are very high because you will still have a placenta this side that is still attached to the uh, decidua, while the vessels that have then been uh, uh, ruptured there then will continue bleeding and so you have more revealed blood whereas if you have the shoes method you have more of concealed blood as there is going to be a clot now if it does separate from the margin until it has completely then separated what is then going to happen is that what will present as you trying to deliver the placenta what will present on the valve here will be more of the maternal surface and meaning that the membranes will then rope backwards so you have the maternal surface presenting um presenting on the uh, valve here and then the membranes may come all the way backwards like that so the the part where you have cotyledons is what will present now at the valve here and that is what we refer to as the Matthew Duncan so this is called the Matthew Duncan method it is often referred to as the dirty Duncan because of how it comes it doesn't come more or less like it has the clot within it and so meaning that there's going to be more blood that is going to be spilled around the delivery area and that clot classifies it as the Deity Duncan, but it's called the Matthew Duncan method. That is how then the placenta is going to obviously separate. So when you give any um, oxytocin to try and facilitate or actively manage the third stage of labor, as you actively manage it, you're facilitating just the contraction effect of the uterus so that that process of separation and reduction of the placenta site can then begin so that the placenta will actively deliver because you can manage the third stage of labor actively or in a physiological way. And we do say that within about five to 15 minutes, the placenta should be delivered. But then we can leave it all up to 60 minutes, which is an hour that is in the cases of a passive and not actively managed uh, third stage. Now, that is a separation. And after separation, you already have the living ligatures within the decidua there that will begin their act of ligating all the blood vessels that are there so that the bleeding is well controlled. Then from separation, you're obviously going to have descent. And descent is just like the fetal head which is coming down the placenta then after its separation with the continuation of the uterine action here the placenta then is going to be pushed down into the vagina and as it comes around the vagina there then it will be able to be delivered and um, you would have said that you have delivered the placenta and uh, its membranes so the descent aspect is just the movement, the downward movement of that placenta from its site of implantation down as it comes into the uh, vagina or closer to the vulva. And then you have the uh, third part that we are talking about, which is the process of expulsion. Now, as we look at expulsion, there are three main ways in which the placenta can actually be expelled from uh, the birth canal. Number one of the... Um, so we have expulsion here. Number one is what we call maternal effort. So maternal effort, in most cases, it is utilized when you have a passively managed active, uh, a passively managed uh, third stage of labor where you have not given any oxytocin to help in the delivery of the placenta. And then the woman will just go ahead and push the placenta and then bear it down. And then the placenta would be delivered. Then the second one is what we call the fundal pressure. Okay. So, fundo pressure. Now, with fundal pressure, this is where you apply pressure on the fundus here to try and help deliver the placenta on the other end. There are higher chances that you may have a uterine prolapse or a uterine invasion because you are applying pressure to try and push the placenta away 
in order for it to be expelled and that is why in most cases a fundal pressure is actually a discouraged method of placenta expulsion. Then the third one is what we call a CCT method or an SCCT method. This is a steady controlled cord traction. This is the most favorable type of placenta delivery or placenta expulsion. Okay. So this one it means that you are going to be applying some traction with your dominant hand obviously and as you apply traction with your dominant hand one non-dominant hand is going to be applying suprapubic pressure just on the suprapubic region so that you don't have a uterine invasion or you don't have a uterine prolapse and then you end up with the delivery of the placenta or the expulsion of the placenta the controlled cord traction is the most favorable of the methods and in most cases it may be combined as well with maternal effort as you go ahead and deliver the placenta in that manner. So basically that is how the placenta is going to then be expelled or delivered. Now once this process has then completed then we have what we call the fourth stage of labor and we did make mention when we were looking at the other sessions where we did make mention that the fourth stage of labor oftentimes is combined with the third stage and sometimes can be left alone. This is where now after the placenta has completely delivered and its membranes have all delivered you don't have any retained products of conception the first hour or so you then look back to the condition of the woman who has just delivered remember in the physiology of a pregnancy we did make mention when we looked at the cardiovascular changes that happen and if you haven't seen that video check check out that video on my youtube channel which is the brain checkers academy we did make mention that there's going to be about 500 to about 800 mules per minute of blood that is circulating to the uterus. So now that the uterus has gotten rid of its products there, this blood now will have to revert back into circulation. Some of the blood is going to obviously be lost. And so you need to obviously look out for the hemodynamic changes that are going to happen within this particular woman so that it doesn't culminate into what we would refer to as a postpartum hemorrhage. So postpartum hemorrhage, I look at it also in a different uh, video but basically any amount of uh, blood that will cause him to uh hematological changes or a deterioration in the condition or presentation or the clinical picture of this woman who has delivered may be classified as a postpartum hemorrhage. In most cases, we would like to use the average of 500 mules to just give us a basis for which to obviously act. So anything below uh, 500 may obviously be deemed to be within normal limits, but that is dependent also on what your iron levels have been. And so that is what is happening within the fourth stage of labor is a state or a stage in which there has to be a return or an achievement of the state of homeostasis. Now, if you have found this particular video helpful in understanding what happens in the third stage of labor, please do drop me comments in the comment section, give me likes on it, and then share the video as much as possible. And also don't forget to head on to my YouTube channel, The Brain Shakers Academy, hit that subscribe button, and the notification button so that you don't miss any of the amazing stuff that we are sharing and discussing on the channel. So that sums it all up on the process of labor. If you have questions, remember, drop those questions and we will respond to them. Thank you so much for watching. It's been a pleasure from me. I will see you in the next one.